Hello everybody, Thijs here again and this time with another guide and this time I want to show you the Hobgoblin Zoo guide. Uh, the Hobgoblin Zoo is a, a creation or at least this deck is a creation by uh, Zale, uh, player from uh, NA and he actually went last season to the top 20 or top 25 with playing this Hobgoblin Zoo deck and uh, this season because it's still really early in January uh, when I'm starting grinding, I always try out new decks and this time I tried out some Hobgoblin Zoo and it actually kind of impressed me how good it was or how good it did on the ladder. Uh, the thing with Hobgoblin Zoo is it's a really big value deck and that is of course also because of Hobgoblin. But Hobgoblin is not totally key. Uh, there are a lot of already like you see the, the deck is kind of made uh, of zoo and tokens. So uh, yeah, all these cards like Sea Giant, uh, Gormok, uh, and also the Seeker, they are just uh, really working together with it. And um, what, is th what is different from uh, a standard zoo in this deck, you always, like it's a totally trade deck. You see we are not really run running Doom Guards, Power Overwhelming. We are really outvaluing uh, our opponents and that sounds really weird. And it's a bit maybe hard to describe, but this deck outvalues opponents. Uh, I, for example, also outvalued uh, Warriors already uh, two times on the ladder yesterday, where um, if you just have like a decent early game with your minions, you have your mid game already with your in game boss and maybe four drops, and then you are just setting up a Hobgoblin at turn six with two minions, and things are just getting super problematic because they don't only have to kill the Hobgoblin, there are all also a lot of minions that they have to take care of. So uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of this Hobgoblin Zoo deck. Um, you play it totally for value. You trade, you trade, you trade until the moment your opponent just uh, cannot trade anymore and he's just too behind on board. That is like the general strategy of this Zoo deck. You see also Zombie Chows here. No Flame Imps, uh, no Anoyatron. Um, it's, um, I was thinking of playing with myself with Anoyatron, but I really find that there is already more, more than enough uh, Hobgoblin value in the deck. And I don't want to hurt my deck too much by putting more Hobgoblin uh, value in my deck. So yeah, I would say let's try the deck out on the ladder and let me show you how good it is. Because uh, I have to say that I was kind of a bit uh, impressed how good this deck is. Uh, I, 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 I never, like, I tried Hobgoblin in some decks, but uh, never really tried it a lot. And I, I just uh, played it on the ladder on stream also for people that watch the stream. You, I have played this deck already sometimes. It's a really enjoyable deck also. Hobgoblin, it's an amazing card. Okay, so we play against Paladin. I'm happy that we face Paladin because Paladin is a really, uh, it's a matchup that you face a lot on the, on the ladder now. It's uh, one of the most common uh, classes on the ladder, especially the Secret Paladin. So we're gonna see what uh, we can do against Paladin. Uh, for sure we keep Zombie Chow. Hobgoblin is not a keep. Uh, I think you can never keep him. You really, when you want Hobgoblin is around turn 5 or something, maybe turn 6, where you can get value of 2 minions. That is like the best. Sometimes you play him at turn 4 already. But uh, it, it, that really depends on situation. Zombie Chow is of course a keep at turn 1. I mean... It's the best one drop we have, right? We have a lot of one drops, but uh, Zombie Chow for sure the best. And what you also want is like, we want to create a lot of tokens. Uh, we, to we have a lot of things that are mo uh, more buffing the tokens. So, um, okay, we we gonna see what secret it is. No Noble. So most likely Adventure Redemption. Can also be something else. Uh, I think we play Haunted Creeper here. If he goes mini bot, um, it's close. We can go knife jiggler here. Oh, it's already difficult. He goes knife jiggler or mini bot. Into a knife jiggler, this is better. Into mini bot, this is also better, right? It depends. If the knife really has to hit, Let, let's not do it. Let's just go for the saber play here. I mean, the deck is made around tokens. The Death Rattle minions are way more annoying for Paladin than uh, general minions are. So I think just uh, putting the tokens here on the board is way better. There is the mini bot. Um, yeah, I think we. Do this. I just wanna drop this away. That's good. Yeah, I think we play it, right? 
we have a turn four of Argus. Yeah, I think Might be redemption, right? Yeah, it's redemption. Ah, that is uh, unfortunate, but I mean, we kind of have to make this trade, right? He's gonna trade back, we can still trade uh, afterwards. So let's just not hope that he's gonna coin Consecration. Uh, the weakness of this deck, guys, holy shit, there is one insane weakness, AoE. There is almost no way, way that you can deal with uh, big AoEs. Consecration, Blade Furies, the, like, we are running some tokens, but we are really using them also a lot. There is really, you just... You just have to accept that you cannot do much about it. You really have to accept that. Like if there is one insane weakness, it is for sure... Uh, it's for sure that the big AoEs are totally wrecking you. But and until now he doesn't have the AoE and... Um, now uh, also the Ooze gets super strong at turn 6 where you can play it with the vendor of Argus together. Um, and it, like let's say, let's say this wasn't Hobgoblin now guys. Um, then we just had a double 3 4. Then we played in 2 mana, what was worth instead, instead 6 attack, 8 life. Like, it's just super insane. Here, there we go. And this is the moment we want to play him for sure. There's no way I'm not gonna drop him here. And look, guys. And this is what I mean. I mean. I say that at the start of the, the guide, uh, this deck is going to outvalue all, all the, almost all the other decks. And it's maybe a bit hard to believe, but now you maybe get the point by, look how strong this is. And let's say we are just drawing one more one attack creature next turn. We're going to get two draws. Let's say we went get one more. It's almost um, It almost gets unwinnable for him at that point. Okay. Nah, yeah, Hobgoblin doesn't help. Okay, well, we, you cannot, you cannot always get it, right? Gormark doesn't do that much here. Uh, so I think I just want to do this. You kind of know he doesn't have cons, and even with cons, uh, this, if I leave this up at 5 HP, it's super good. So yeah, though, though we are not getting, sadly, more Hobgoblin value, but still, we are so good on board. Like, the early game that we have, all the tokens we are creating, we don't need the power overwhelming. We don't need the doom guards. We are just gonna keep continuing without valuing uh, his place. Well, this is a good Gormak. Uh, so still no other token for. Uh, if I have a goblet, I want to get more value from it, but sadly not really happening here. Yeah, this is too good. And the attack phase with the rest. So you see, because we are outvaluing the deck so hard, we can just win on board. We just keep pressuring with the minions we got. Um, don't really, uh, don't really care what he does. Like yeah, in challenge your that'd be good for him next last turn, but it will still not even come close to our place. So now I think it is. Uh, but if you remember, like there was one turn where we really had to play into cons. But a lot of secret paladins re uh, don't really play consecration recently. So, uh, but yeah, uh, AOE it is a big weakness of the deck. So here we have lethal guys with the tokens, with the Gormok. It's amazing. If you don't have Gormok in this deck, it's not the biggest problem. You don't really have to play Gormok that badly. I just really like him because we're playing with so many tokens. I love the Gormok. If that is like because uh, there is like only one insanely uh, expensive legendary in this deck, what is Gormok? If you don't have him, uh, I would say uh, you can consider one power overwhelming. You can also just consider playing one uh, flame imp. It doesn't have to be an. Uh, you can also play a dark iron dove. It doesn't really have to be it, like Gormok is really not in the key card in his deck. The key cards in his deck are just the cheap tokens. Uh, the zombie chow, I find it pretty key, and also the uh, the hobgoblin, of course. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we keep Squire. I'm just thinking how good is Surgeon gonna be. But just the flexibility of having the Surgeon uh, able to trade into the into a knife jiggler, for example. I really like it. So let's see uh, how it's gonna work out. Uh, I'm pretty sure we just play Curve here to stay flexible. We don't have to... It's not about pressure. We don't have to coin out in 2-drop to react with our Surgeon. Just gonna, just gonna find out what he's gonna play. We got the time. Uh, sea Giant also really good in this deck. Holy shit. 
I had already some C giants that you can just play for three or four mana around turn four. It's super insane. Uh, so this is for sure. Yeah, I think we coin out or creeper now. Yeah, if he if he goes with uh, animal companion, we kind of need it. Ah, uh, depends. But let's just do it. I mean, we don't know what it is. It can be explosive trap. It can be um, freezing. I am. I don't really know what foreign hunter we are playing yet. Okay, that's good for us. Huffer is really good for us. So, yeah, like this is the trade we want to make. Um, yeah, I think we st like there are so many different traps they're playing now. Sometimes it's snake, sometimes it's explosive. If we start with it, I mean, I'm even fine with trading this in and. Play in game boss or play this for three mana and we trade it back. It's even a minion I want to get back. Even this is a super nice trade. Okay, it's a freezing. So now we have to decide do we play this for three mana or not? I don't think so because we have the in game boss and we even want our sea giant cheaper. But uh, also into an. Uh, this was a really nice play also into the. If it was a snake trap, it was also a pretty nice play. It's really hard to say what secrets the hunters are playing now. Uh, you know how big that one is because it's not just uh, ki him killing my 1-1 one -one. it is we not getting the CGI yeah, now it's insane that one was super insane otherwise we are uh, ah. then we still had to get, better get a bit lucky but yeah, I think we just played the 4 mana what we have here um, I mean we don't really have much for the dragon egg but the other two are so bad right uh, I think it's reasonable to pick this if we still know that we have the abuse of search in hand. We don't run max, we don't run weapons. I cannot see. I mean, there may be gonna be decent one drops, but I, the, the potential that the dragon has, egg has is better, in my opinion. So yeah, we're gonna trade the knife figure definitely away. And that's the turn. So let's say he has unleashed. Well, he just lost, uh, lost his uh, most key card for unleash. What is the knife juggler? But top deck unleash, wow. So is he going full face now? He's silencing the creeper. Okay, he makes the trades. I'm happy that he makes trades, I think. Look this sea giant guys. Look if the hunter will have gone face here, man. That will be Oh and he goes a bit face. I'm so happy. Uh, so the the thing how Sea Giant works, if you play other minions first, he still gets cheaper. So I can play the Peddler, he goes to 3 mana. I can play the Dragon Egg, he goes to 2 mana. What means that I play for 3 mana and I still have 2 mana left. So I'm able to do that if I want. But we're gonna just figure out how good it is. Definitely gonna pick Void Walker in this deck. Void Walker is really good. So now we can still play our other tokens, guys. Uh, so now I have to decide, do I want uh, the Seeker for 5-5 five five or the Sea Giant? Well, then we want the Sea Giant because it's just better. But, I mean, it's harder to put the Seeker off. You see how big the Seeker also is now? Yeah. Oh, uh, we, we can't even play it. I mean, we're still one minute, a minion too short. So I'm probably going to keep the Seeker here. I'm uh, going to make this straight. And then trade with one hound, yeah. But yeah. Like, the deck is made around tokens, and if the hunter is also gonna make some tokens, really helps us for the future. Got another huffer. Oh man, and another unleash. Uh, he's missing some hounds here. Cold get more. He's going full face. Uh, not cool. So, yeah, I really don't want to tap much anymore. Nah, the 8 has to go to the face. I cannot see that it is going to be good to not put the 8 into the face. You might want to keep a low tap for a key turn. I really don't want to tap. We are going to win. 
this one goes to I cannot see this not being right here. Or we gonna do this value trade. Uh Yeah, we cannot really pressure lethal. Maybe we can tap once, but oh, I don't like it. I really don't like tapping now. Yeah, this one will play it for as a one-one. It trades with an hound. I really don't like tapping anymore because I know that we're gonna win the value game. He played double unleash, so get a small making token like, and he had the double unleash. I mean, that's super strong. Yeah, he's going full face again. Yeah. Put this apple on your head. So how do we do this? Oh, that are not well, nice. It's one of these three. Oh, that's nice. Soon. Deal. So if we put them at a le like, what oh, are his outs now? I mean, we might not even trade into the knife shit or into the scientist. Every spell costs seven mana, and bow is uh, bow is lethal. Three damage is lethal. I should make this trade. Yeah, nah, this trade is good. There's like no out now for him. High main is a good card, but not an out. So if it is freezing, we have lethal on board. If it is pure trap, uh, I have to attack. Then yeah, we got him. Even if, like if it was a bear trap, I still just called the tech steal with this one first. Call trade back in with the low tap and put the sea giant use. So you see again, guys, double unleash against our tokens, still outvaluing the deck. Um, you just have to try the deck out yourself once. I am a big fan of this. Uh, it's a really cool deck. This Hobgoblin Zoo deck has a lot of potential. Made around trading. Way more uh, made around trading than Zoo. Zoo is still an aggressive deck. Where you are also going aggressive some of the plays. Or you go a bit YOLO. This deck is not. This deck is. You play your own game. You play the. You play. You are the control deck. And it's. I know it sounds weird. But you are also that against Druid for example. So. Hope you had fun with this deck. Hope you had fun with this guide. Thanks for watching everyone. And see you next time.